Hello friends, today I am going to be making a chainsaw prop for one of my upcoming cosplays and I thought I would take you with me as I create this prop because it might be helpful to some of you. Um, not necessarily as a tutorial video, but I think if you use some of the tips and tricks that I go over in this video, it might help you create your own prop. So, let's get into that. I've got this nice long piece of cardboard. It's not really that thick and it's kind of squishy. So I might, um, once I cut it out, I might use it to trace another one and just glue them together. But I'm gonna use this for my blade. Um, I'm gonna draw it all out as one piece, like the, the blade and the chain together as one piece, just so it stays together and it's easier to put together. Uh, I'm starting with the blade because um, that's the easiest piece to then build off of and attach the other pieces to. So I'm going to draw that and then show you what I've drawn. This is what I have drawn. Um, I kind of made some of these too close and too big. So this won't be an exact like um, cutout, but I will be following it. And like once I cut it out, I'll change it. A little bit um I don't know if I'm gonna add another piece it's kind of like but I think if I add another piece of cardboard it'll be too thick so when I paper mache it I'll probably just add more support to it so now I'm gonna cut it out and see what it looks like I'm also gonna be using my exacto knife I won't show the blade um to cut it out so I can get like more precise cutouts but then I'll use my scissors um, sometimes. These are fabric scissors, and I know you shouldn't use fabric scissors on the things that are in fabric, but I have a different pair of fabric scissors that I use for fabric. Sometimes I use these for fabric, because um, I don't really care. <laughs> Here it is all cut out. I kind of messed up on it. It looks really good right here, but then as you go around, it kind of gets uh, I can always redo it if I need to but I think once I start building on it it'll start looking better so now I'm gonna be doing the base and um, I'm gonna have to take some creative liberties when it comes to the chainsaw because there's only one reference photo that is actually really good and it still doesn't give me a lot so I'm using this design to do the base along with some others for like the details so I'm gonna get working on that right now I don't have any really big single pieces so I'm gonna have to use a piece with this bend um, two of these to make the base which is not ideal but I think it should be okay once I put everything together, I'll just um, put some cardboard behind it for some support, and it should work. Here's the shape. It's kind of hard to see. It'll look better when I cut out, but I made it too big, which is great. Um, you always want to make your pieces bigger than you think you're going to need, so that way you can um, cut them down. Because you can't really add to them to make them bigger. I mean, you can, but it's a lot harder to do. It's easier to make a piece really big and then cut it down to size. So once I cut it out, I will do that. And before I attach anything to it, I'm going to cut a second one out of there. Here's the first piece. I'm definitely going to have to add some support here. Uh, it's also still a little large, but I think... In proportion to the other stuff it's not it's not too bad I don't know I might have to remake this we'll see it's a lot easier when I'm making smaller pieces because I can usually just cut out stencils of like a picture and just go up that and to make them the size that I need but with the bigger pieces it's a lot harder but I think this is good 
I'm going to trace it and cut out the second piece and we'll go from there. I have the two pieces cut out. This one is a lot thinner and floppier than the first one, so it's going to need a lot of support. They're also not exactly the same size. Um, like this one is bigger here. This one is bigger over here. Um, so that's not too much of a problem. That just happens when you trace them, makes them bigger, and then when you cut them out, you can cut them out differently. That'll, that'll be fine when I put it together. But now, I can't just, like, stick this in here and just glue it together. I've got to make it big. So I've got to get pieces of cardboard and glue them to here and here to sort of make it stand up and look more like a chainsaw. So that's gonna be a lot harder to do. And I don't think I can do that right now. I can get everything cut out, but I don't think I can glue it. So that'll be done much later. But yeah, it's looking okay so far. Okay, I didn't record while I did this, but I now have the base all put together. I put uh, paint tape everywhere that there was like a line where I attached two pieces together. I stretched that and then put some glue on the ends to hold it. So it's a lot stronger now. It's still a little bendy. And this is like the, but once I start um, paper macheing, it should be all good. Now I'm gonna go in with details before I paper mache it though. Here it is, pretty much all done. I might add a few more details, like I might put something here to raise it up a little bit. But I added handles. These are made out of foam that I cut down to size and I just covered in the painter's tape to hold it. These are like push pins. Um, this is just cardboard. And we have the other side which looks like that. But I might add a few more things, I'm not sure. And that's still a little like flimsy, so I'm hoping it fixes itself when I start paper mache But it's pretty much done, and I like how it looks. I was not expecting it to turn out as good as it is right now. But yeah, I just might do a few tiny more details, but then I'll show you guys when I start um, paper mache it. To start paper machining, I usually do one or two uh, layers of newspaper, but I don't have newspaper, so I'm using this thin brown paper that I have. Um, you can use any thin paper for your first two layers. Sometimes I do three or four, but that depends on how it looks after I've done two. And you can always add more before you paint, so don't worry about that definitely do more than one. So I'm not even close to being done with the first layer. See, I have all that and I haven't even gotten to the other side. But I wanted to note one of the problems with paper mache is that some of the details tend, like especially the small ones, like this looks okay. But like that you can't, you can't even tell what that is. Um, they tend to get taken out through paper mache so you have to rely on the painting and you gotta like really push down like around there because you can't that was one of these they look fine over here but like you can't even see that one so sometimes that happens it tends not to happen on the big details like too noticeably but the very small details can sometimes get taken out and there's nothing you can really do about it except, like, just push it down as the paper mache as much as you possibly can. So, um, tiny malfunction, and I had to reinforce it so it looks ugly, but that's okay. Sometimes that happens, and I just really won't use this side in my pictures, and that's completely fine. Um, also, Kenny is here. Okay, um, but yeah, so 
So it's okay if that happens in yours. Um, just pick a side that you want in pictures and reinforce the other side. So here it is right now. I've got all the layers on. It's pretty thick and this is a lot stronger now. Um, but now I'm going to be adding the last leg layer, which is like these thick paper bags. And uh, the reason I usually use those is because it gives it like extra strength. And usually when I'm using newspaper, it's good to like have a brown base so you can paint. It doesn't matter in this case, but it is support and it helps paint. But you have to be very careful when you're putting it on because this is the last layer and you don't want any like bumps and whatnot. But I'm going to start that and then I will get back to you. Alright, so I have all the layers done. It looks pretty good. I did mess up my first layer of um, thin brown paper so it kind of looks weird. And there's nothing I can really do about that, uh, other than, like, maybe sanding it down a little bit with, like, a nail filer. But, for the most part, I think it looks really good, and I kind of like how the mistakes look on it. So, next step to do is I'm going to start painting it. And that's going to take a while, but I'll get back to you. So right now I'm just painting it. I did the blade and now I'm just trying to get it yellow. The paint I have is not great so I'm definitely going to have to do some more layers. And then I'll go, I'm just going to paint the whole thing yellow and I'll go over the details with other paint. But it's looking, it's looking okay, I think. Uh, not really. <laughs> So I have the whole base painted. I haven't done the details yet, but I'm just going to do that after. But this is a problem that I run into a lot, and I do not know how to fix it. Where it cracks, like the paint cracks. It doesn't look this bad. Like, it seems to only be there right now. So that's good, because it's usually a lot worse. But again, it's not completely dry. So I'm just going to seal it with some glue and hope it doesn't do anything more. If anyone knows how to fix that, let me know, but I, I honestly have no idea. But I'm just going to seal it now and, well, first I'm going to do the details and then I'm going to seal it. And then I'm done, so. Uh. Alright, it's all painted and sealed so I'm just letting it dry and it's all done I do still have to work on my painting like I said in the beginning because that's not very good um but since it's just a prop for me and not someone else I I don't really care and I think it looks cool so I'm happy with how it turned out Thank you for watching. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. Um, I know it's not a tutorial video, but I figured if I go over what I do for my props, then that might help you guys create your own props. Because all you really need is some cardboard and a few recycled materials, and you can create anything. So I also did prop commissions, which I'll mention later. Um, but you can you can make your own like it's it's not as hard as it looks like i used to think it was really hard and um, these are some of the other props i've made and i'll put some more at the end but thank you for watching